Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber, don't forget to hit the sub button, leave a like in the video, comment down below, all that kind of stuff all helps the channel. But what are we doing today? Well we've a couple of jobs to do. We are going to clear out uh, our calving pens at the back of the shed. So we're gonna get them all scrap out, we're gonna get them all lamed off, bedded off nice and new. We're gonna be doing a whole uh, just a, a recap of how calving is going and uh, also uh, I've had a little package delivered from Adrian and I found we found so we'll check that out uh, later in the video as well so uh, plenty coming up let's see how we get on let's get going at it All right, so going to do a little bit of a voice over here in this part of the video. Uh, we'll see how we get on. If we run out of things to say, we can always add a little bit of music in. Um, so this is basically the same bit of footage you've seen a second ago. You've seen uh, the onboard shot of taking the, the manure out. Uh, this is this is a, just the same bit of footage here, just from the air though. Um, I do try to move the drone around, trying to get a few different angles and shots of taking the, the muck out. So uh, you'll see those as we progress on. Um, yeah, time to get this cleaned out. It's been about two weeks now since we last cleaned it out, roughly. And it is, it's just starting to get a little bit on the damp side underneath. A um, couple of reasons for that. Uh, you can see there is some nice enough looking straw coming out there. It looks nice enough, but it's actually quite wet. And uh, some fantastic straw. We have we have absolutely fantastic straw this year. Some of our straw, there mightn't have been that much of it on the fields, but uh, last year with the way the weather went, but it was it's fantastic quality straw but it hasn't got a great soak on it sometimes you get it like that if you've really nice golden straw it can, it just mightn't it mightn't soak as well um i always find the best kind of straw to soak is straw that probably gets a little bit a little bit of weather so maybe after you've cut it, it gets a little bit of rain not too much rain a little bit of rain it starts to go off color just a slight little bit uh, dries up and you get it baled. I think that's the best straw for bedding. Uh, it soaks best. But yeah, that's one of the reasons why uh, I don't think that the straws are soaking as well as other years. Um, another reason too for it getting so wet is that uh, this shed has got the galvanized sheeting on the roof uh, is slightly spaced for ventilation purposes. So you've got a small gap between each sheet. Now the gap might only be I'm not sure what it is. I don't think it's even half an inch, but that small gap, every time it rains, if it rains heavy, you get a little bit of moisture that comes down through it. Now, you can stand in there, you, you won't really get wet, the calves don't get wet, but if, if you have a lot of rain over the space of a week, it, it all adds up and it just helps to, to, to dampen everything down a little bit. So, uh, yeah, it's just the way, the way it's done, the way the shed is done, and it causes a slight bit of an issue. So, um, it's just time to get this cleared out. So you will see bits of straw coming out that does look like it's really nice stuff, but uh, it, it wasn't salvageable. Um, yeah, two weeks ago since we cleaned it out, uh, we're trying to keep it cleaned out. We used to let it build up more, but uh, we don't know so much. We like to clean it out. Uh, we like to lime it, which you'll see a little bit later in the video, and uh, just get a fresh bed down on it. And it's just... It's kind of a, a prevention against the likes of scour and disease and that as well. To be able to get it cleaned out, to get everything limed up fresh and to get a fresh bed in there. It just, it helps prevent uh, things from, from happening. So, yeah, it's just one more thing that we try to do to, to, to keep the, the scour away, which doesn't work, by the way, because you still, once you have uh, crypto, or, uh, you, you just end up with crypto again every year. Um, 
which we have this year, we've a little bit of an issue with it uh, every year. So it's it's something that we know how to deal with, and we can we we can kind of keep on top of it. But it's just time consuming and the, the hassle of it. Yeah, so we're down to the last, uh, probably the last few scoopfuls uh, at this point now. Uh, tra- as I said, the trailer does hold it all just about now. It is fairly full by the time it's all cleared out. But it does just about hold it. Uh, you can see here on the view down, there's a few things lying here in the slatted tank. Uh, the slurry pipe, because we were taking a few loads of slurry out of this tank during the week. Uh, there's also uh, the timber that goes along here in front of the sliding door, just to keep the jug away from the door. Uh, there's a feeding pot. There's uh, a tub there as well. So there's a few things lying on top of the tank there, which looks like a bit of a mess. But uh, a lot of that stuff all goes back into the shed uh, once we're finished. If Peter, my cousin, he's given me a hand here with just... Uh, he's just given a bit of a hand to, to the few wee bits at the sides we throw them out uh, and load them in then just give a wee bit of a scrape and uh, you'll see him demonstrate in a few minutes uh, how to, to lime the pen up um, yeah drone battery was uh, actually run low and I just dropped the drone onto the ground here so a little bit of a shot from down low uh, which is actually quite nice so uh, just something a wee bit different um, yeah, as you can see, it is fairly strawy, the, the dung. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, <laughs> decomposition that has to take place there with, uh, with that before it'll be spread. But, um, yeah, look, we're, we're bedding it. Bedding it every second to toward day, depending on just how wet it gets or how, how much the calves are mucking it up. So there is quite a bit of straw in there. Uh, but, yeah, it's just... Going through a bit of straw, but it's it's only for these number of weeks before we get some calves out. All right, so here's Pete now uh, showing off how to do the, the liming. Uh, we're just using a fairly standard enough, uh, a cubicle lime will do fine. Or even if you were stuck, some of those white rhino builders limes or those kind of things will do fine. There'll be a good cut on it. Uh, we do try to, you see, we get a, put a wee bit up on the walls. Uh, and then even on the, the bars of the pens as well, uh, as well as just giving a light dusting across the floor of it. Um, and I, I think it does help. I think it, 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 does, make a, a, it does make a difference. Um, we also, when we come in then to, to bed next time round, um, most times we'll actually put a wee dusting then on top of the, the but just before we put the lime down, we'll put a wee bit, bit of a dusting of lime on top of the, the straw that's already there or dung. And again, it just helps to uh, to keep to, to, to keep back any disease and uh, bacteria or a build-up of, of anything around the place. Um, doesn't work 100% obviously, no. but it, it definitely helps. Uh, so just bedding out the pen now at this point. Uh, One-handed, which isn't ideal. Uh, using small square bales of straw, uh, small square bales is fantastic. This the straw is slightly chopped, and uh, they're easy enough. You might, well, I'm making a bit of a, a mess of it here because I'm doing it all one-handed while holding the camera, but it does make a big difference to uh, then to, to rolling uh-huh. out the bale and trying to, to move it around the place. But it, 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 it breaks up a lot mm-hmm. easier. Uh, and even you don't shake it out 100%. Uh, the cats come in, do a couple of laps around it, running around it, they'll uh, deal, finish shaking it out themselves. You find with the small square bales. Uh, we have always used small square bales. Uh, we do have, often have big round, uh, the, the larger round bales, we've had the big square bales, but uh, the extra bit of work there is putting them in, uh, I think we'll be sticking with the small squares going forward for another while anyway. So. All right, so we're finished cleaning out the shed, as you may have just seen there, all bedded up, all limed, everything is done. Uh, and calves now just starting to filter the way back through. Uh, how are we getting on with calving? Well, calving is going fairly well. We've got, uh, there is 30 cows calved now in total this year. Some of them a little bit earlier on, but uh, the current batch, I think it's 25 that we have calved. Uh, there's still around 20 remaining. Uh, I think it's 19 or 20. So. We've got a little bit of a break now, I think. Uh, it just has started to slow down. It was very hectic there for about a week and a half. So delighted to have it slowed down just a little bit. Uh, there's two here that we are keeping, kind of keeping an eye on. And then as I say, the rest then are, uh, they're with the, they were the ones with the limousine bulls, so they're just a little bit behind. We don't expect them to, 
to really get going calving again for for maybe about three weeks maybe a month which will suit great because uh, we want to get these guys that we have inside out now it's been wet over the last week and a half really weak so uh, that has stopped us from getting any out uh, we hope to get some out this week saying that the weather is going to pick up from around tuesday wednesday ish and if that happens we should get we hope to get maybe 10 or 12 of these out uh, the the oldest of them the youngest of them were still of course like every other year we're battling crypto uh, but we have it under control we haven't lost any keeping a tight eye on them treating them as needed and uh, treating them twice a day so it's a full-time job just checking them and keeping an eye on them making sure you don't lose any but so far so good uh, usually there's one or two will fall victim to it in the year haven't done just yet but we'll see how we get on uh, but yeah these ones here as I say the oldest of them will get them out at some point during, some point during the week uh, and then the older ones will wait until they get over the crypto stage because there's no point letting them out when they are a little bit loose behind because you're going to be running around the field trying to catch them and treat them outside uh, and then maybe if the weather turns cold uh, and they're a little bit loose then the calf can go downhill very quick so uh, at least when they're inside it's relatively warm and you can you can treat them as needed so that's kind of what we hope to do so uh, as I say a little bit later in the the week we'll have a if we're letting calves out I'll video it and you'll get to see them getting out and, and see how they get on but uh, yeah nice to have a nice fresh bed here for the calves you can see some of them now are just starting to lay down um, a couple of little guys here that we have to give an extra bit of treatment to uh, you see the small guy here his mother here uh, she has only got one uh, spin or one teat that is walking whatever happened after last year she's a pair of teeth last year she's only one of them walking now so we're having to supplement him a little bit of uh, milk every day just once a day um but uh, apart from that everything else hasn't been too bad we have another calf that had got a bit of a chill that we put a coat on him and just happened to keep an eye on him too uh but yeah everything everything going all right uh, a lot of late night calvings but it's all part of it, I suppose. You just have to, sometimes you could throw, the last couple of years we've had very few late night calvings. This year, it seemed to be every night. There was one or two calving every night uh, from around one o'clock on. So uh, it's just the way it works out. But all alive, all going okay, and happy enough with that. So, yeah, let's hope it keeps going like that.
right, so my old buddy over at iPhone, we found Adrian uh, called me up last week. He says, Jerry, he says, uh, I'm sending you something up myself, uh, the wife and kids, sending you something up, just a little something uh, wish you uh, congratulations on the birth of baby Matthew. So, uh, now, but the way he said it, there was like a little bit of divilment in it. So I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, I think there could be something smart in it. So we'll we'll open it up and see. Have it here in front of me. Let's see what it is. Okay, Adrian, let's open this and we'll see what the story is with it. Well packaged. Oh, here we go. Uh, so, lovely little little case. A card, of course, and uh, a couple of. Oh, look at this. <laughs> now, anybody who's been watching us uh, will have seen there's a bit of there's a bit of sport going on between me and Adrian uh, with Case and John Leo. I'm slagging him over the case not starting that well, but. <laughs> So something for George and for Matthew. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> very, very good. I'm just gonna wheel out the card here. Alright, so I've opened the card. I I'll, I'll read it out to you. Uh, to Jared, Suzanne and George, congratulations on Matthew's arrival. Just a little something to start them off on the right track. Uh, from Adrian, Sinead, Danielle, Nicole, Sophia and Alana. Thank you very much uh, for the beautiful gift. Uh, I was going to say you shouldn't have, but no, you should have. I think I think it's very good. It's very funny. Uh, thank you very much for the present. I do think this may escalate things a little bit on the slagging front, uh, but yeah, that's something we're going to have to watch out for in the future. Uh, yeah, I'll 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 see if I can get the kids to fit into it. I'm not sure that they'll wear red, but we'll see. We'll we'll try and see see what happens. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks very much for everyone for watching. Uh, we'll see you during the week. I uh, hope you all have a good weekend and we'll talk to you then.